In this lesson, we are going to be introduced to something called hypothesis testing. Now, hypothesis testing is part of the inferential branch of statistics where we are trying to draw a conclusion or make an estimation. Now, when we did confidence intervals in the previous section, we were making estimations about the population parameter. Now, when we perform a hypothesis test, we are going to be using that to draw a conclusion and make a decision about something. As we proceed through each lesson in this chapter, we're going to be combining all of these steps together so that you can go through, by the end of this chapter, a full, complete hypothesis test. So the first step when you complete a hypothesis test, you want to state your hypotheses. Now there are two parts to stating your hypotheses. The first step is to establish a working hypothesis about the population parameter in question. This is called the null hypothesis. And let me write down what it looks like. Okay, so that's the notation that you're going to see for the null hypothesis. And when we specify our null hypothesis, we're going to use a value that is historical or has been claimed to be true for a certain period of time. So an example of that might be the average height of a professional male basketball player was 6.5 feet 10 years ago. So we might write down our null hypothesis as H O or H naught is equal to, and then I would do the symbol for the population mean, which is our mu, and then I would put equals 6.5. So I'm stating my null hypothesis. In the past, this is what we've known it to be. Another example might be if a television network claims that the average length of time devoted to uh, commercials during a one hour program is eight minutes then we might say that for H naught, the population mean is equal to eight minutes. Then the second part of stating your hypothesis is called the alternative hypothesis. Any hypothesis that differs from the null hypothesis is called the alternative hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis is constructed so that the hypothesis is accepted if the null hypothesis is rejected. So think of it as like your backup hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis has several different ways that you can note it. I've seen it like this, where it has the Greek letter alpha. I've also seen it with just regular lowercase a. These all represent the alternative hypothesis. So different ways that you can see it. Your null hypothesis is always going to be written as h and then the sub-zero down below. All right, so let's go through some examples. Example one, it says, suppose you want to test the claim that a population mean is 40. We're going to state the null hypothesis. So we write it like this, then we put a colon, and then we write whatever it is that we're claiming. So we're saying that the mean is equal to 40. So that's our null hypothesis. Now if we were talking about the proportion, if I was going to say like the proportion was 40%, I would put P is equal to 0 .40 there. So you have to pay attention to the wording if it says mean or proportion. Now, the part B to that is state the alternative hypothesis if you think the population mean might differ from 40. If the alternative population differs from 40, that just means it's not equal to 40. So we would write our alternative hypothesis like this, and I would use the does not equal sign. Now, the reason why I used did not equal is because it didn't specifically say whether we thought it was less than or greater than. If it just says it's different, you just put down it does not equal to. Now, for part C, it says state the alternative hypothesis if you think the population might exceed 40. 
So if I think that the population mean might exceed 40, I would write it like this, right? I would write greater than 40. And then part D says, state the alternative hypothesis if you think the population mean might be less than 40. So I would write the alternative hypothesis as mean is less than 40. So when you state your hypotheses at the beginning of a hypothesis test, you're going to have two statements. You're going to always have your null hypothesis. And then you're going to have something like this, where you have one of these alternative statements. And it just depends on what the question is asking. This is an example of what could happen, all three different possibilities. Okay, let's go to the next example. It says, suppose you want to test the claim that a population mean is 5. Again, it's asking about the population mean. If it said if it was looking for the population proportion, I would make sure that I use the correct notation and use P instead of mu. So because we're stating the null hypothesis, I would write down my notation H sub 0 or H naught. And I want to write it as mu is equal to 5. And when I state my alternative hypothesis, this one is saying, you notice that the population mean might be more than 5. So I'm going to write it like this. Mu is greater than 5. For part C, it says, state the alternative hypothesis if you think the population mean might not be 5. So this doesn't indicate which direction we're looking, if it's greater than or less than, it's just different than 5. So we would write the null hypothesis is that mu is not equal to 5. And then part D says state the alternative hypothesis if you think the population mean might be smaller than 5. So we're just going to write mu is less than 5. Okay, next example. We want to test whether the mean GPA of students in American colleges is different from 2.0. The null, state the null and alternative hypothesis. Okay, so my null hypothesis, and it's asking for the mean GPA, so I would write mu is equal to 2.0. Oh, and then my alternative is going to be, since it's checking to see that if it's different, it would be mu is not equal to 2.0. So here's my null, and here's my alternative. So if we decide that there's enough evidence against the null statement, we would accept the alternative statement. We would say we reject the null hypothesis, or we would say we do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, in the next example, it says we want to test whether the mean height of 8th graders is more than 66 inches. We're going to state the null and alternative hypothesis. So, my null hypothesis is what it has been previously or historically, which it sounds like 66 inches. The alternative hypothesis would be if the eighth grader's height is more than 66. And we're talking about the mean height, so I'm going to use mu. So we're going to write down mu is greater than 66 inches. Okay, in the last example, it says, we want to test if co college students take less than five years to graduate from college. On average, state the null and alternative hypothesis. So, my null hypothesis would be if the average is five years, and the alternative hypothesis would be if it's less than five years. There's my null, and there's my alternative.
In this last part of the lesson, I'm going to briefly go over with you the different kinds of tests you could have. You could have a right-tailed test. You could have a left-tail test. Or you could have a two-tailed test. And what really determines on the kind of test that you're looking at it's the alternative hypothesis. If you're looking to see if mu is greater than some number, I'll label it n generically. Here's my mu in the middle, and I'm looking to see if mu is greater than some number n. Then we're looking at a right tail test. We're looking at the area to the right of n, which means I'm looking at the right tail of the graph. And that's why they call it the right tail test. And the same idea goes for left tail test. If I'm looking to see if mu is less than some number n, then that's going to be our left tail test. And then the two-tailed test happens when we're just looking to see if mu is not equal to n. So we don't necessarily care if it's less than or greater than. We just want to make sure that it's not equal to n. So we're going to look at both sides or both tails of that graph. So this is just the beginning of your hypothesis testing. These, this is just the first step in looking at it. There's a series of steps we're going to follow. And as we continue through each section, I'm going to show you some more steps. And by the end of the chapter, we'll be able to go through the entire test and draw our conclusion from there.